Okay. So I'm going to show you the Starmark Training and Behavior Solutions Pro Training Collar. I'm going to open it out of the package and show you how to open and close the collar. I'm going to do a, that while off of a dog as well as I'll put it on a long haired and a short haired dog so you can see how it's fit and how to hold it in your hands. Um, if you have gone through lessons with me, I've explained this during the lesson. And this is just another way to follow up if you've forgotten or gotten stuck at home. So this is the large Starmark collar. It also comes in a smaller one that is about half the width of this specific large link. Um, meant for smaller dogs and you can even use it on large dogs that don't pull very much. But what I had on hand right now was the large. So that's what we're going to work with. I'm going to put this aside. This is just a safety strap that they've started to include with them so that in case the collar should pop open, um, this will be around your dog's neck and attached to the leash as a backup. I've sold a lot of these collars over the past 10 years, and I've only had one client tell me that it popped open on his dog. So I personally don't think it's a big issue. doesn't mean that it hasn't happened and can't happen but they include this now for safety. So this is the large Starmark collar out of its packaging. As you can see, it looks like a martingale collar with the prong collar attached or combined together, I should say. And it's made of a plastic, a nice hard plastic that is still pretty durable. And what I've told owners before, and you may have heard me tell you, is that I recommend when you first get this collar, just to sit on the couch, kind of play around with it, opening and closing it several times so that you get the feel of it before having to do it on your dog. So if you can see in the video here, which I hope you can, that these are links. They're individual links and each link has a specific side to it. So I'll take it apart here. So we have um, two different ends of the link. Let me just take this off so you can see one by itself. Okay, so here's our individual link. Um, now I probably don't have the correct terminology and very flowery words to describe it, but how I describe it is one side has hooks on it. If you can see that in the video here, this has a, a hook around it with a notch on one side. And then the other side of the link has nubs, as I like to call them, so that the hook will go around the nub. Um, it's pretty easy once you get the hang of it and you've done it a few times. I am not going to lie, it can be very difficult, and if you do have weak hands, this is not the best collar for you. But there are a few companies that create this collar with what they call a quick release on it, which is a snap that they put onto this strap to close it onto here. Which makes it a lot easier. Um, a place you can get that is called Palmark. They do make that and sell it and it has come in quite handy for some of my um, elderly clients or clients with weak hands. Okay, so I'm going to put this color back together and show you how to open and close it so that you get a better idea of this. And again, if you've gone through a lesson with me, you've heard me say it before. So this is just so that you can practice at home. So I do everything a spe specific way because I'm a right-handed person. If you're left-handed, then you can just flip the collar around. But how I like to do it is to have the side with the hooks on it in my right hand and the side with the nubs in my left. I put an index finger behind the triangles on the links, on the end links, with my thumb as a pressure point in the middle of those links. So that the index fingers are kind of the leverage doesn't, it keeps the collar from closing on each other. So my fingers there to keep it from moving. And then the thumb's the, the pressure point. Now because I'm right-handed and the way that this collar is made, my right hand is going to primarily do most of the work. The left hand is going to sit still and kind of put pressure against the right hand. 
So how you have to hold the collar to make sure that it goes together is you have to have each side at an apex to each other, like this. If I try to put together this way, it is not going to attach. So you have to have the collar um, almost with the triangles pointing at each other. And then you press down, because again, this is in my right hand, I'm going to press down with my right hand so that both of those are stuck together. So you can see I'm pulling it apart. It does not come apart. Now to take it apart, you just do the opposite. The right hand's gonna do all of the work. Again, I put my index fingers behind the links on the triangle on each link and my thumb on top of it. And then I'm going to push up with my right hand and down with my left. Now, as you can see, it's pretty hard. This is a brand new collar. So this is why I suggest doing it several times just to kind of work the collar out a little bit. So I'll do it one more time. I'll close it where we have the rounded link in my right hand and then the nub link in my left and I'm going to press down and you should hear one if not two pops when the links close. So that was the second click and it's really good to hear that. If you don't hear two clicks then you definitely want to double check you have it connected. I always pull it apart and make sure that it, it stays t connected, that there's nothing that's not attached. And to take it apart I'm going to push up with my left hand and the right hand down. I'm sorry, push up with the right hand and the left hand down. And I don't know if you know, but sometimes I do a little wiggle too to help loosen it. So I'll do that again. I'll, I'm kind of pulling my right hand towards me to get this back link open first and then the closest link follows. So I'm pushing up. So can you see that that back link is open and now both of them. Okay, so um, hopefully that helps you guys to get it back on your dog and off of them and again practice this without it on your dog several times and if needed mark a link so that's the one that you can make easier to use if you don't want to buy the quick, the quick release one from Palmark. And now I'm going to put it on my dog Caleb who's a long haired German Shepherd. Um, I'm going to have to add links because he is much bigger than this collar, but that's the beauty of this collar as well, that you can fit it perfectly to your specific dog's size of neck because you just add links as needed or take them out as needed. And then I'll also put it on a short haired dog so you can see that as well. Okay, so we're going to put the collar on Caleb now, and again, I have it so that on the right hand is the hooked link and the left hand is the link with the nubs in it. So I'm going to, and actually let me take a link out of here so it's fit properly. Sit, Caleb. So you want, what I recommend for long haired dogs is that the leash connector or ring is at the back of the dog because if the collars fit properly you can't spin it very well on your dog. So I'm going to put that behind Caleb's neck and then as I described earlier in the video, the index finger is behind the points. And I'm going to snap down on both of them and they're connected. So I'm pulling, nothing's happening. And to open it, I'm going to push up with my right hand. Again, I have my index fingers under both links. Push up with the right hand and pull away with the left. So I'll do it one more time for you to see. Push down so that you hear two clicks. It's connected. And then push up with the right hand. All right, so on the short haired dog, We've got the nubbies in my left hand and the rounded side in my right hand with the band at the top of her head. And we're going to snap it closed. One snap, two snaps. And it's attached and it's a little big for her, but it's not too big. And then to take it off, I'm going to press down with my right hand and it's off. Very good!